We got that big echo chamber going. All right, Kevin Mazur, uh, his film is Celebrity. It opens this Friday in select city, cities and on video on demand. And uh, he has a website where he made... Hey, how you doing, Kevin? How you doing, man? We all want to make about $205 million, so that's why <laughs> we're having you here today. I mean, sure, we'll talk about your movie and all that, but this is a pretty good story, actually. Well, thanks. You, um... So you were a guy, how old were you when you were selling like tickets to a concerts and concerts and things? Well, this is what happened in 1977. My first concert I went to was Led Zeppelin at Madison Square Garden. No, let me do the math for my audience because I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> if it's 2012 now and you started in 1977, let me just do it quickly. I add by tens. That's how I do it. So you got 87, 97, 2007. It's 30 years. Now, this is the part where I get, just remember 30 for me, okay? okay? 2008, 2009, 2010, 11, 12. So that's five. Now, what number did I ask you to remember? 30. Okay. 35 years ago you talked about. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So you're from Long Island. I'm a Long Island boy from Lindenhurst. Right. So we would take the Long Island Railroad into the city, and it was one big party whenever you went to a concert. I mailed away for tickets. I ran into friends on the train. They said, I go, where are your tickets? They go, oh, we're going to scalp tickets. I go, what's scalping? Right. They go, oh, you go and you buy tickets there. So after the concert, we're all riding back. The show is amazing. So you scalped some tickets. No, I, I mailed and I got tickets. Right. So I got six tickets. I was lucky. And the show was great. So all my, everybody's going, we're going to go again tomorrow. And I go, you got tickets for tomorrow? And they're like, no, we're going to scalp. I go, I'm going to go with you guys. So we went the next day. We scalped tickets on the train. Then when we got into the city, we found tickets that were better seats. And my friend's like, oh, I can't believe we bought those tickets. I said, well, let's buy those tickets and we'll sell the ones we had. So that, how old are you? Were you, were you I a was kid? 17. 17 years old. And this is what you're busy doing with the tickets and concerts. You love rock music yeah, and all so that. Yeah, so then I, I was like, wow, you could do this thing with, you know, scalping tickets. So then I started hustling tickets at Nassau What did College you think State. you were going to do for a living? Like you Well, just... back in the day, my father was a New York City fireman. Uh, so and you figured you'd be a fireman. I was going to be a fireman and a cop. So you had your whole life kind of mapped out for yeah. you. So you start getting into this ticket thing. And then when you were at these shows, you... Start taking pictures of what? I started taking pictures of concerts. I always, you, you know, could bring a camera in there. Well, back in the day, it was, they didn't it care. Was, they didn't care. So, so, back, so what kind of camera would you bring? In? I had, you know, I had a, a Nikon with with a zoom lens that I got for a high school graduation. So right. I had a crush on Stevie Nicks. I went, me and my girlfriend go to Fleetwood Mac. I take all these pictures of Stevie Nicks. My girlfriend's flipping through them. She's like, there's no pictures of Lindsey Buckingham. I go, why would I photograph Lindsey Buckingham? Right. Wait, what am I? What am I? Am, what am I doing here? Yeah. So you take. So you go to these concerts. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, because we're gonna get to the part where you make two hundred five million dollars. <laughs> so you go to the concerts, and then somebody told you about Annie Leibovitz, the famous photographer. She's one of the, the greatest photographers ever, right? And someone says to you, why don't you call Annie Leibovitz? Show her the pictures you've been taking at these concerts. You never had any desire to be a photographer, right? You weren't, like, looking to be a photographer. But someone said, hey, these rock pictures are pretty good. Show them to Annie Leibovitz. Well, I tried, what, what happened was I'm a big fan of Annie Leibovitz and Rolling Stone magazine. So I called her studio, figuring I could talk to somebody. And she actually picked up the phone. Wow. And she gave me advice. She told me to call these photo agencies. So I call the first photo agency. I bring my photos in. I show them the photos. I have all these amazing pictures of Billy Joel that I took at Nassau Coliseum. Right. They said, wow, can we hold on to these pictures? We know somebody that's interested. They call me back two days later. They go, pick up People Magazine next week, and your pictures are going to be in there. And I pick up the magazine. There's my what pictures did you get Billy paid Joel. for those? I think it was like 150 bucks. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, back in 1977, when you're some schlubby high school kid, you get 150 bucks for some pictures you took at a concert that you were going to anyway. Yeah. Unbelievable, right? Yeah. So then I was hooked. You know, I was like, wow, I want to get my pictures published. And I just wanted to go to concerts and photograph all my idols that I love to go see. So how do you get backstage and start photographing guys? Like, how do you get to like, because Elton John was somebody who allowed you backstage access. How do you convince him to let you backstage? Well... From scalping and being at all these shows, I run into at Forest Hills. I, me and my friends snuck backstage, and I run into this guy, Ken Sunshine, who is one of the biggest yeah. publicists out there. Yeah. Ken was working for ASCAP. He goes, Wow, you know, I want to hire you for hmm. a job I have next week. I go, Sure. He, I go, What is it? He goes, Oh, it's a luncheon for Paul McCartney. 
I was like, oh, my wow. God, Paul McCartney. That was my first paid gig in the business. And so, in other words, they let you go to the luncheon, and now you legitimately are taking pictures, and Paul McCartney's not trying to stop you because you're the, you're the photographer. Yeah, I'm hired by ASCAP, and I met Paul and Linda. They were the sweetest people. And, even, most and, and you didn't know a lot about photography, and those were the days of film. Did you ever fuck uh, up? Fuck up, man. I, I wasted so much film. Back in the day, right. uh, you, you know. you don't know what you're doing. I, I don't know. You know, I took some photo classes. And a lot of times, too, is you get caught up in the moment and you're fumbling with your cameras. <laughs> and, and it wasn't so easy up. to work a camera back then. No, not at all. Took yeah. me, it took me a while. You know, I basically learned uh, on my own. You know, you, you can't tell. You know, it's How hard. much did Ken Sunshine pay you to take pictures of Paul McCartney? I think I got paid 250 bucks to, for that job. Wow. And if you're a kid out of high school, that's pretty damn good. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't make, I made $100 a week at my first radio job. So two fifty, you're probably living like a king. Yeah. And uh, so you decided, hey, I'm going to be a photographer. Fuck being a, a fireman. Well, this is it. So my, my dad wanted me to be a fireman, of course. I was lifeguarding at Gilgo Beach, having the time of my life. My father's going, don't go to, you know, don't go to college for, photog you know, for art or photography. Just yeah. be a fireman. So I said, I want to be a photographer. They go, you'll never get a job. So I started going on interviews for to be a photographer you know get a job as a photographer and i landed a job as a medical photographer in brookdale hospital in brooklyn wow, no so kidding. i did that for two and a half years so then you keep taking pictures of these so let's get to the part where so so okay so like yeah. paul mccartney you take pictures of him elton john lets you back so then you know from that i kept you know my i never had a portfolio i never really worked for anybody so it was word of mouth that i basically built my career and my you know reputation on so i started getting hired by Rolling Stone magazine a lot. I ended up So you weren't a paparazzi ever. No, I was never You didn't a stalk anybody. No, I never no, I never did that. I because I loved live music. I'm a big fan. Does Wire uh, Image show paparazzi pictures or do they you, they you show know, everything? Yeah, they basically show everything. You know, it's this they we kinda of call it like soft pat, you know, it's a lot of times you get called by publicists, oh so and so's coming out of here, do take you a think, picture. Do you think you would have been a paparazzi if uh, things had gone differently? No, because back when I was young, a friend of mine who was an autograph collector from Brentwood, De Niro studied him for uh, his character, King of Comedy. Yeah. And uh, so Vinny said, you want to come meet De Niro? And I said, sure. He goes, go buy all these movie stills. We, you know, I come from an Italian neighborhood in Lindenhurst. My friend's dad was actually Luca Brasi in The Godfather, so we right. idolized <laughs> The Godfather and De Niro. So we go to this set of King of Comedy, Vinny goes, you know, meet us here. De Niro comes out of his trailer. I go, oh, my God, there's Robert De Niro. So I pick up my camera. Start I start, take, start taking pictures. He walks up to me with his bodyguard, pushes me up against his trailer, and goes, don't ever, ever take a fucking picture without asking, and then just walked away from me. And that's traumatizing. Uh, traumatizing. I was shitting in my pants. I was yeah. like, oh, my God, here's my... So, to my be a, so your point is, to be a paparazzi it takes a special type of person because you go in there and you're photographing someone essentially against their will. Yeah. And you couldn't, you didn't have the stomach for it. Uh, you know, after the whole scene with De Niro, you know, we met him afterwards. He was very nice. And he, he said, you know, down. yeah. And he said, you know what? You should always ask before you take a picture. So I was like, wow, you know, that makes sense. So every time I'd be in an event and somebody would say, uh, they don't want their picture taken. I would say, just remember me next time. Right. And it, and it kind of worked, worked in my favor. And then years later, I met De Niro. We were backstage at a Bonnie Raitt concert and I was me, De Niro and Dustin Hoffman. And uh, I end up, I said to him, I go, listen, because of you, you gave me the best advice in the business. And because of you, I'm on staff at Rolling Stone magazine. He's like, really? So I ended up telling him the whole story. And Dustin Hoffman, without missing a beat, turns to me and he goes, he scared the fucking shit out of you, huh? So you were on the staff of Rolling Stone magazine. Yeah, I was That's on staff the epitome, of Rolling Stone. That's right? Oh, yeah. That was it. Did you work with Annie Leibovitz? No. I, you know, I crossed paths with her, but she did more of the covers. I was the guy that went and did all the big events and all the live concerts. So you got and real access. Yeah, I got real access. And when, when Elton John hears Rolling Stone is coming, they open up all the doors. They want to be in Rolling Stone magazine. Well, Elton, what happened was then, I think it was like 1988 or 89, I got hired to photograph Elton at all his shows at Madison Square Garden. So we ended up hitting it off and becoming friends, and I would always work for Elton from all... You ever do any one. artsy pictures of these guys, or is it always just straight no, I concert do, shit? No, no, I do portraits and you stuff. Do? I have literal, uh, I have a Bob Dylan cover, Love and Theft. That's your cover? Yeah. 
I have many. I have what do many, you get paid to do a cover for an artist? Well, you get, it varies. It could go anywhere from five thousand dollars to twenty five thousand. It depends. Wow. You know. It's hard to get to that point, though, right? I yeah. mean, today, these guys are all scrambling. I mean, look at this guy who just got killed trying to photograph Justin Bieber in a Ferrari smoking a joint. I mean, he just lost his life. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing. is, It's sad that what happened to this guy, that he lost his life chasing down a photo, chasing a celebrity. It's, it's awful. Yeah. And it seems sort of demeaning, right? I mean, it's a tough life to yeah. be out there. I mean, these guys are like... They're on safari every day. You were telling Gary, he told me this, that like you see some of these guys, they start their morning by stalking out these kids who are famous celebrity kids. Yeah, so I, you know, to do research for the film, yeah, I, I right. hung you out. Have, Kevin has a film out uh, called Celebrity, Cell Ebrity, Cell, S-E-L-L, -L, uh, that opens Friday in select cities, and uh, it's about... Video pa demand, too. It's about paparazzi guys. Yeah. And uh, these guys start their day off by just stalking celebrity kids. So we would, I would go meet, meet them. We would start back in, when I was doing the research, Michael Douglas had the cancer bout. And they would start with, go to his house, get him taking his kids to school, run down to Sarah Jessica Parker's house, get her taking her kids to school, then run to Hugh Jackman's house, taking her kids. What'd you think of all these guys? Were you like, kind of like, hey, guys, this is a shitty way to make a living? You know, I... You know, some of these guys, like Darren Lyons, who's in my film, yeah. here's an award-winning war photographer who says, I, that did not pay the bills, so he got into being a paparazzi and celebrity right. photography. But, you know... And then what happened? How do they sell these pictures if there's so many guys around getting pictures of Sarah Jessica Parker's kids? How, doesn't that water down the market? I mean, you've got 50 guys who all have the same stupid picture. Exactly, and that's, that's why the market has changed a lot now. And I can't understand why these, there's so many, right. and they're fighting for a photo that costs 150 bucks. where back in the day, after Princess Diana died, it kind of like died down, yeah. and then OK Magazine came to the States and started competing with People Magazine and Us Magazine, so drove the photo price through the roof. When you say drove the photo price through the roof, what can a guy get? Well, you know, there was, we show examples in the film, there, like those pictures of Britney Spears shaving her head. Those, yeah. What does that go for? Those guys, they must have made hundreds of thousands of dollars. Really? Yeah. You because know, that's and, a hard picture to get? Well, how no, did they get that picture they, anyway? They, they stalk her for 20, you know, literally. But how do you get, where is she when she's shaving her head? That was she, in a barber shop? She, she, I think it was in a barber shop or a tattoo parlor. I mean, it was, you know, she was... The lowest point of how many, life. Thing. How many guys? There was three guys that got that photo. The thing is, though, if you, to get an exclusive photo, you'll make more money if you're right. the only guy. These guys, now there's so many of the paparazzi there. It's, That's right. Know. So if I'm one of the three that got the picture of Britney Spears shaving her head, don't the, other, don't, don't the magazines go to the guy who'll give them the lowest price? Well, that or, you know, it's also who's got the better angle and the better photo. Right. And the thing is now a lot of guys that are running around out there, they don't know how to use their cameras. They just put it in auto. Right. And that's why there's so many of them. That's what's changed the landscape it's of this It's become business. very easy to be a photographer. Oh, yeah. You know, if you just wanted to clip, cl you know, click off a picture. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a digital camera. It's easy. Yeah. So the picture is you got to get a great picture. Three guys have the picture. And then OK Magazine comes to you. And do you, do you, these guys probably get pissed off because once OK Magazine publishes it, it goes all over the web for free. Well, back in the day, that's, the web wasn't as strong when that was all going on. Right. The web has changed everything. Right. And, and Twitter. So Twitter, you know, like the celebrities are constantly I guess Twitter my point is if I sell a picture to OK Magazine and then they put it out, that's it. It's the end of the market because it ends up on the Internet and uh, there's no re you can't sell it anymore, right? No. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, no, there's so many different. The thing is. Like when we started Wire Image, we, we created our website to get the pictures out all over the world. So there's different markets. Not only are you selling to like OK Magazine, People Magazine, Us Magazine in the States, then there's all the weekly magazines in London, Germany, Italy. So right. there's all different markets. So what, not, kind of, what kind of paparazzi who really is diligent, what can he make? What kind of money can he get yeah, per know, year? Some guys, it depends on how hard you want to get out there and work. You yeah. can make anywhere from... $20,000 to $50,000 depends on how much you hustle and how good your agency is. Right. Because you know, you know, it's not just the photographer. You have to have a good photo agency to sell your photographs all over the world. It seems like you've got to put in a lot of time to get that fifty grand. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. It, it, it's sort of, 
being with these guys, it's sort of like being a cop on a stakeout. You yeah, know? right. A lot of How time. much am I worth? Like, let's say, I mean, just to get a picture of me is no big deal because I'm around anyway. I mean, people see me all the time. I'm sort of, you know, around. But, like, let's say I'm in a bathing suit on a vacation. That's a good one, right? Yeah, that. So or, what could you get or, No, that? Say, say somebody's got you and following you on the beach and you and Beth have a moment on the beach. Right. You know, and nobody else got it. What can you get? They can get, you know, thousands of dollars for a couple that. of thousand. Yeah. What if I now? If you what, just, if, what if I make out with Fred right now? You take a picture of it. Let's sell it. <laughs> that, that would sell. Yeah, yeah. Howard Stern is gay picture. That oh, would be yeah, a good exactly. one. Exactly. Right? Howard Stern outed. <laughs> Let's say this guy who just lost his life getting a picture of Justin Bieber smoking a joint. What would that have been worth to him? Could that have been hundreds of thousands of dollars? That could have been a lot of money. Oh, that over a hundred grand. Oh yeah. That oh would, really? If he was the only one that got that. Yeah, and because Justin's so hot right now, so it's worth dying for. In other words, <laughs> in a way, <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. So, so uh, anyway, let me get back to your story. Listen to how brilliant this is. This is Kevin Mazer, right? So he's a photographer. He's doing his thing. You figure out you're gonna when the web starts getting big. How long ago did you start Wire Image? Two thousand and one. Okay. In two thousand one, he figures out. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if there was a website? Where and a lot of people had this, a lot of you know, yeah, where magazines could go look at pictures and then buy the pictures. So you say, okay, there's a lot of people who had that, but your idea was different. You said, let me start a website where everyone can see the pictures, yeah, not password protected. It's not password protected. If I want to go on and see pictures of, I don't know, Lindsay Lohan in an opening, anyone in the public can look at them. Yep, now think about that. At first, you go, well, that's stupid. Because that means everyone gets them for free, so who's going to want to pay for them? But you figured out that people would still want to pay for them. Magazines would still want to buy them. And your stuff now was getting looked at by everyone. That so expanded the market. Yeah. And Wire Image became the number one place where magazines go to buy photographs, right? Yep. It was brilliant. Yeah, we dominated. Did everyone tell you you were a fucking moron for showing the pictures? Well, that was the thing because I had we had partners, of course. So right. me and my partners, I when we were coming up with building the website, we went to our tech guy and I said, "Is there any way to do this without being password protected?" Because everybody had password protected websites, right? So the magazine. So well, uh, how did you have have that idea? It's brilliant. Well, the thing is, I we I don't do paparazzi photos, and I love people seeing my photos. I I love that my name's on a on a photograph and people love it and that's where I so you said I want reputation. people to see it why yeah. would I hide it yeah exactly but then weren't you worried that the magazines wouldn't want to buy it because everyone had seen it no well if you got a big exclusive photo we wouldn't right. put it up on the website right, we, right. you know we'd, we'd like make a deal with a magazine right and then once it, you know that they came out in that weekly magazine right. then we put it up you know we'd send it out to all the magazines all over the world and let them look and at it. And I bet it. when you started this website, everyone said you were a douche and you were wasting your money starting a website, right? Because, eh, so what? So you're putting your pictures up there. Yeah, they were like, oh, there's so many other photo agencies out there that, that have been established right. for a long time. Yeah, and, and you go, eh, why should I bother? That, so the market's already being fulfilled, but yeah. you were fulfilling it in a different way. Exactly. Well, that's, you know. How I mean, much did it cost to start Wire Image? Well, we, we had really good, really good money guys and business guys. Dev guys that I've been that I was working with the CEO company of Jason Nevada. So he said, "Let's raise some capital." So we raised about a half a million dollars and half then, a million dollars. Yeah, we, so we raised about a half a million dollars and then we started up the website and it took just off. Took off within six months. It was. It was I love the website. I'm on it. I have a, a password to oh, it cool. also, so I can actually see them bigger. The pictures, but yeah. you could see them for free, yeah. and I love that. And so. Uh, you sell the thing, what, how many years later? We for sold 200? it in uh, 2007 to Getty Images for $205 million. So how many partners did you have? We had eight partners and a, oh. and a bunch of investors. But so how I, much you know, do you get? I did all right. You were yeah, a founding got, father, right? Yeah, I'm one of the co co founders. So, you know, I did, What do you mean you did all right? What percentage do you get? I, got, I did really well. <laughs> well. Did you get 20%? Uh, not 20, but I did, you know. Did you get 15? Uh, I, yeah. 15%? About, yeah. Now, about. I could do the math. Let me see if I can do some quick math. Fifteen percent of two hundred million. Well, the first thing I do, all right, ten percent of two hundred million is twenty million dollars. That's the first thing I do. Well, wasn't now, that wasn't this, you know, I wouldn't say fifteen percent, but I, it's lower than that. But oh, but we had a lot. Me up. I'm doing the math. No, I know, but it's over ten. We did. I did all right. 
Should you make twenty million bucks? No, nah, I didn't make twenty. But 18? we had because we had a lot. Of, we had a lot of. Uh, we we went through three rounds of financing because we were growing the company. And suddenly, you're not sounding like such a genius. <laughs> Hey, it's more money than I ever dreamed of. I would have would have been a fireman, fireman right? Cop. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty amazing. Yeah, so you know, I did really well. No, you did. So now, are you retired? No, and that was the one thing. When I sold the company, Sting comes up to me and goes, "So now you know, never have to work again. Now, now you can retire." I go, "Yeah." I go, "You didn't retire." I go, right. "I love what I do. I'm you love taking stop. pictures." Yeah, I saw my when my dad got his twenty years as a fireman. Bam, he retired right away. What is the most fun you ever had uh, as a photographer? What was the what was the shoot? What was the the star that you shot that really turned well, it was, you on? There's so many stories, but I've I've been at every big major event from from Live Aid to the Grammys every year. Live Aid fun? Live Aid was a blast. I and I shot all the Woodstocks. I was the photographer in, for Woodstock '94 and '99. So yeah, Live Aid was amazing because when I when I went to shoot Live Aid. The funny thing was... Who's the nicest rock star you ever shot? Like a guy who's just a great guy. Great guy. Sting, Billy Joel, Elton John. Billy I, Joel because he's a down-to-earth guy. Yeah, and he's a Long Island boy like you and me. And same like Sting. Sting is just... Uh, he's, he's not, he doesn't put on airs. He doesn't give a shit. Not at all. I, I'll give you a for instance. So Sting, the police finish up their show in Long Island at Jones Beach. So I take me and my buddies... At the party, who Sting and Trudy are hanging out and dancing with all my friends. Right. You know? That's the best thing. That that's unusual, right? Yeah, because so most un- most celebrities think they're too good to dance with the photographer. Oh and yeah, and every, hang out with his buddy. Yeah, and every time I, you know, Sting and Trudy, you know, right after the storm, I ran into Sting and Trudy, and they were, they were like, "How the boys? How'd you guys all make out? You know, from the storm? Who is the biggest shithead? You know, who is the biggest shithead? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I, you Seven. know what? I haven't. What? I what? I win over everybody. Who is the biggest dummy? Who is the meanest person to you? Never mind shithead. Okay, so who is mean to you? Uh, actually, there was nobody. Well, I I happened to be standing next to Sinatra, Ron Galello when Sinatra came out of the event. And he was like, Ron, what the fuck are you doing here? Get out of here. All you photographers, get out of here. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm, I don't want to be around these guys. Sinatra was the worst? He wasn't the worst, but, I mean, he came out screaming. I mean, at, you know, I happened to be standing around some of the paparazzi guys. I was like. Do you ever get uh you, you ever do any do any nude portraits of famous women? No, but I've why not? I like, to me that would be the ultimate. Eh, you know I haven't had chance to. I'd, you I ever do any of the fashion shows? Yeah, I do the. I, Don't those chicks just get naked in front of you all the time? Well, I used to do. Uh, you know, I I still do. I do the Victoria's Secret fashion shows. Right. And in the, I'll never forget it was one of the first ones we were doing. I was backstage. And I'll never forget Naomi Campbell and all the models are changing back there. And they, they, they don't they, care. They don't care. So and Naomi's getting changed and she turns, she's like talking to me and she just got a little thong on. It's like, oh my God. You look good, huh? <laughs> and what'd you do? You just start snapping away? No, I was just, you know, I, you know, I got to put my camera down because I don't want to get tossed. I was but why hired. don't we get more of those pictures uh, backstage of the, uh, seriously, why don't we get more of those pictures? Because not everyone's as ethical as you. I mean, some of these guys see these chicks naked and they snap off a few frames, right? Oh, yeah. Why don't we see those? Yeah. Do you ever fuck any of those girls? No. I would, you know, I always was in a relationship. It's too bad. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Kevin's film Celebrity opens this Friday in select cities and on video on demand. So here's what we learned. The film is about... Um, uh, like, you know, these these paparazzi guys, which is a fascinating topic because their lives are pretty damn hard. Yeah. It's like they're covering a war or something. Yeah. The ce- <laughs> and the celebrities hate them, right? They, they they deal with them, but, you know, some celebrities don't. It's wrong to, that, don't you think it's wrong to follow Surrey Cruz around and then Sarah Jessica Parker's kids? Do you? Th- what did you think of that after you made uh, the movie? That's me. I don't... Uh, I think that... Uh, I don't understand why there's no laws out there that protect, stop, protect these children. It does seem wrong. Yeah. I mean, the kids didn't ask for this life. Exactly. Uh, but then a lot of celebrities actually want you to photograph their kids. They yeah. act like they don't. But, the, you know, there's you know, a lot of the reality stars created their, their whole thing with paparazzi. Yeah. And quite frankly, a lot of celebrities call these paparazzi and then act like they're pissed off about them. Right? Am I, is that true or not? Yeah, some, some do. For additional information, go to CelebrityMovie.com. It's S-E-L-L-E-B-R-I-T Movie.com. And follow the movie on Twitter at Celebrity, at Celebrity, S-E-L-L-E-B-R-I-T. So when's it come out? comes out on Friday. Friday. Good luck with it. Thanks, man. Good Appreciate meeting it. you, Kevin. You too. And uh, way to go, making that. Well, you didn't make $200 million. 
You made like ten million, <laughs> but still, that's pretty fucking good. Oh yeah, for just putting up a website. Yeah, you know how many guys put up websites and you know they just lose money. No, oh, exactly. Right. So we learned a lot of things, guys. Start a website, uh, but start a website and come up with something a little bit different. You know. You know, everyone thinks you have to close everything. This guy opened everything up to the public for free and made a fortune. Yeah. So there's some sort of lesson in there. I'm just not sure how to sum that up for you. <laughs> also, we learned that it's actually that between 1977 and 2012, that's 35 years. And if you don't believe me, do the math yourself. <laughs> but I did it for you live on the air. And we also learned, oh, wait, it's 2013. I just realized that. My math is off. <laughs> well, you do it at home yourself. And we also learned that uh, Kevin's movie is called Sell Eberty. See? Where you sell the celebrity. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Good luck with it. Thanks, man. All right. I got to take a break. We'll be back.